Hey guys, welcome to Insight today. I am Rachel Tucker, your co-host, and this is my dad, James Gall. It's good to be with you again today. Um, hey, you know the theme, it's um, Insight, and it comes from Daniel chapter 12, verse three, which you can read there on your screen. And we want all of us in this period of time to grow in insight for the days in which we live. Yeah. Um, speaking of all of you out there, we would love to hear where you guys are from. So drop in the comments uh, what city, state, province, country you guys are joining us from. We love getting to see that and connect with you all. And um as it's fun a lot of the places we've been to some of the places we haven't been to um and it's just great to have you guys with us today we're actually going to be talking about a call for prayer an urgent call for prayer um before we get to that last week we had a great episode called like a mighty river and it was kind of like almost like a two-part series the week before that we had one flowing like jesus um both i feel like had really great ministry times mm -hmm. a part of it but just kind of tuning in to what is jesus doing around us and how can we um be aware of his river and uh operate in it um yeah it was really good what what do you think dad yeah you know sometimes the themes might not be catchy and yet they are but what sometimes it's the meat is in the teaching and sometimes it's in the ministry time and the last couple of weeks it's been really spontaneous and really wonderful in the ministry sections so some of you might want to go back because who knows your name might have been mentioned or there might have been some something very relevant that was in the ministry section. Mm -hmm. So it was like a mighty river. It was based out of John 7, verse 38, about rivers of living water will flow out of our innermost being. And Jesus is the one who spoke that, and it is a word for each and every one of us. But where are we going today? Yeah, they were doing um, prayer in the US is actually the national day of prayer. So, yeah um we get to take advantage of that and if you are from the u.s awesome if you are not from the u.s i just encourage you uh whatever we're sharing to grab hold of it and really take hold for your country and pray for your country um as that's something that we're called to do in the word of god and so that's yeah. where we're headed but before we do that dad do you have a mug I have a new mug. A new one. It's a cool one. It's from Pennsylvania. Last week, I was in a Moravian area in church history. I was in, you know, the Lancaster, Pennsylvania area, but it's lettuce. So this is from a pretzel company. It's the first pretzel company in America. It's in Lettuce, <laughs> Pennsylvania. And it's actually a part of the Moravian church history uh, that I love. And so here's my new mug from Julius Sturgis Pretzel Bakery in Lettuce, Pennsylvania. Did you have a pretzel? That's the important question. Yeah, I brought <laughs> some home. You did? They're they're dipped in chocolate. You'll have to come over and eat some. Oh, oh. my word. Okay. I just, I have They're a good. handmade mug today. It's one of my faves. Cool. But cheers. Wonderful. Well, you guys, cheers. Oh. Type in the comments if you are uh, sporting a mug with us today. And go ahead and hit share if you guys want to share this with your online community on social media. Yeah. It's always a blessing when you're able to do that, but um, let's go ahead and pray and yeah. get on it. Yeah. yeah, let's jump right in. Mm -hmm. So obviously, this is a um, period of time that we want to really cultivate the culture of honor very intentionally. In the United States and in different countries of the world, we're coming up this Sunday is also 
Mother's Day. Now, I know different countries set aside different Sundays or days for Mother's Day. But in the United States, this Sunday is Mother's Day. And so I just want to give honor and tribute to the godly women um, in the body of Christ and around the world. And in tribute of that, we just released this book, Heroines of Faith, Women of Courage, Compassion, and the Secret Place. And so that will be uh, in our uh, mentionings at the end of the broadcast, and it's at our website. And so you, this is available for Mother's Day that you can order. And I just want to bless all the mothers. And so I'm just going to pray right now, because this is both, I want to honor mothers, and I want to as well, we're going to go into an urgent call to prayer in honor of today is by congressional order in the United States since 1952, the National Day of Prayer. Father, we submit ourselves to you, and your word says to give honor to whom honor is due. So I just bless all of the mothers around the world, the mothers in the body of Christ. And I just want to thank you for my grandmothers who just impacted my life, for my dear mother and my mother-in-law who are all in heaven, and my amazing dear wife who is also in heaven. And I just thank you for the shadow that they all cast. And I also thank you for spiritual mothers in the faith who have impacted the lives of many. And now I bring before you all of the rich mothers who are watching this broadcast today, even my daughter Rachel right there, and my daughter Grace Ann, and my two daughter-in-laws, Danielle and Pearl. And I bless my daughters and daughter-in-laws because they are mothers. And I speak a father's blessing on Mother's Day. And I speak strength and blessing and honor on all of the mothers, both spiritual and natural, today in Jesus' name. And now, Lord, we present this broadcast to you. We're asking that you help us, that you guide us, and that you give us faith in our heart that our prayers will make a difference in Jesus' name. Well, today's theme is an urgent call for prayer. I put that in there, not just a national day of prayer, because this is an urgent call for prayer. The theme verse, of course, comes from 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 to 4, where it reads, Therefore I exert, I exhort, first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and, now this is a really important word, giving of thanks. So if you're going to grumble when you're praying for those in authority, you better just stop. You better just stop because it's not the way we're supposed to do it. And if that means you got to process through something, then do it, please, because I have to. I have to because it doesn't mean you have to like those in authority. It doesn't mean you have to agree with them, but you do have to give thanks for them. Whoa. Therefore, I exhort, first of all, I call this priority prayer. First of all, that's supplications, that's petitions, prayers and intercessions. See, there's all kinds of prayer. And giving of thanks. Be made for all men, for kings, and all in authority. All in authority is not limited, though, to secular authority. It says all in authority. So that could be pastors. That could be in the home as well. For all in authority, that we may lead a quiet and a peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. And so, again, Lord, we pray your word 
And we see right now that you saved that first of all. So we right now say we have not seen this as a priority. And I ask for grace for us to align ourselves with your word in Jesus' name. Now, let me give you a little history of what today is in the United States. It's very unique. Today is the National Day of Prayer. In 1952, a joint resolution by Congress was signed by President Harry Truman, declared an annual National Day of Prayer. The Supreme Court, get this, folks, two different branches, actually three, all three branches of the government of the United States were involved in this. The, the executive branch, President Truman, that it becomes passed by the Congress and the Supreme Court gets involved as well. This is highly unusual concerning the right to pray. So in 1952, a joint resolution, that's the legislative branch, that's Congress. The joint resolution of Congress, that means House and Senate both, signed by the president, the executive branch, declared an annual National Day of Prayer. Then the Supreme Court, the judicial branch, affirmed the right of state legislatures to open their sessions with prayer in a court case called Marsh versus Chambers when, then in 1983. Then along comes President Ronald Reagan, and in 1988, the law was properly amended and signed by President Reagan permanently, setting aside the first Thursday of every May by executive order, by congressional resolution endorsed that every state has the right to assemble by the Supreme Court. So this is actually really amazing when you really study it because all three branches of government gave an affirmation of the right there to be an a public assembly of the right for prayer on a national day of the first Thursday of every year. Now, has this always gotten equal press under every president? No. Depends upon who's in, who's president. Now, having said that, I'm not going to take that any further because I'm not going to get into who's done it more publicly and who's doing it less. But sometimes there are issues there. There are. And sometimes there's more very publicly done. And sometimes it's almost acted like this day does not exist. But this day does exist. And this is a day that we, as believers, must take advantage of. So today on Insight, Daniel is our example. And folks, listen, Daniel, again, lived in Babylon. He did not live in Jerusalem. Daniel lived in a society, in refuge. No, not in refuge. Daniel lived in a foreign land. And he was in a climate that it was not good. But he 
obeyed a higher authority. And he bowed his knee three times a day at an open window. And the window was towards Jerusalem. And he acknowledged a higher authority than the secular authority of his day. Was he walking in dishonor? No. He was walking in the fear of the Lord. And so must we. So there's my little brief historical sketch. If you want to learn more about all of this, I wrote a book called Prayer Storm. And there I have got great historical, uh, contextual, biblical teaching, whether it's praying for revival in the church, praying for the greatest youth awakening the world will ever see, and praying your family into God's family. And there is really well-researched praying for those in authority and showing the historic documents of the times that prayer and fasting was called by governmental decrees in this book. So I'm commending this to you as a resource. So I'm, we're just going to start to pray. And you say, well, what do you pray? You pray by being led by the Holy Spirit. So it says that we are to pray for all those in authority. And I don't believe that that is only secular authority, but we are supposed to do that. So, Father, we come before you right now in the name of Jesus in a very urgent, strategic, and critical time. And we call on your name. And right now, I bless those in authority. And if they do not know you, but they religiously know you, and they 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 they, they, they call on you, but they don't really know who they're calling on. We call on you that you would pierce the religious facades. And we are asking for a heart turning, whether it's in our nation or whether it's in South Africa, whether it's in Brazil or whether it's in Colombia, whether it's in Australia, whether it's in England, or wherever these lovely people are viewing and watching from, from Canada, from Mexico, wherever they are tuning in and agreeing, we lift before you those who are in authority, and we first of all bless them, but we call out for their salvation. How can they lead with light if they do not have light? How can they lead us in righteousness if they have blinders on their eyes? So first of all, we do bless them, but we bless them that you would soften their hearts. We bless them that, we, that you would send laborers across their lives that would have bridges that could carry cargo, that would speak to their hearts, that would release the spirit conviction concerning sin, righteousness, and judgment to come. Oh, God, we are asking for a move of your Holy Spirit in high places. For all those in authority, in the executive branch, in the Congressional House and Senate in the United States in whatever form of government it is in your nations and in the judicial. Oh God, we cry out to you for our Supreme Court. They're wishy-washy. They say one thing and then they do nothing. And we cry out to you. Oh God, give them a backbone. Oh God, Give them moral fiber. Oh, Lord, show them your word, your will, your ways. And where the enemy comes against them, we lift up a shield of protection around them. For 
your kingdom's sake. But we bless them and we give thanks to you for those who have stepped to the plate. We ask for help and grace and mercy. We know that a revival in the land is not limited to who sits on the who sits in authority. We know that. We know that because revival is about the condition of the church. But right now we do pray for those in authority and we call forth that you soften their hearts. We pray where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is liberty. And we're calling for a window of the winds of liberty to blow across this land and the demonic winds of anything other than true freedom will be held back, will be held back. Oh, Lord, will be held back. For Jesus Christ's sake, for our nation's sake. And we bless, we bless the families today of those in authority. And we are calling for dreams and visions and visitations to be given to the spouses. Because if you would knock on their hearts, oh, Ones. We know that. I don't feel like I should name names, but I pray for the spouses right now. And I'm calling forth for visitations. I'm calling forth for hearts to be softened. I see that right now. I call forth for dreams and visions, and hearts to be softened. I'm calling forth for a word to be whispered to spouses of those in authority, and that they would become prayer warriors. God, we need help. And I think this is a key. So right now, we not only pray for those in authority. We pray for their spouses in Jesus' name. Rachel, I don't know if you'd have a place that you could join with me in prayer. Right yeah, now. I just, um, Lord, I just thank you so much for um, what you're speaking and what you're doing. But um, to piggyback off of the spouse yeah. prayer, God, I just ask that there would actually be wisdom given, not just an encounter, not just a um a dream or a vision lord but these spouses that carry yes. uh the conviction from you yes lord that you would give them the almost wisdom beyond their years of how to carry mm -hmm. their spouse how to honor them how to gently lead them pray for them into your kingdom and how to give godly wisdom how to listen how to honor god i, th I thank you for how you have created marriages yeah. that um wives can can carry and honor their husbands and submit under their authority and let them lead and um so we do honor like especially like the husbands of the household god i do honor them as um you have modeled it off of this is the structure of church it's it, you're so in love with your church god and so we just bless the uh the system that you have set up for us to honor each other even within a marriage, God. And so as you speak to those in authority, 
you've placed especially husbands in authority in each family household. They are those in authority over each household, God. And so we honor, we yeah. bless right now, God. And as, um, as a wife, yeah. I honor, I bless, and I call into that, uh, that anointing and for that um, fresh wind for to fall upon families, especially those who are in leadership positions, God. We ask that your fresh wind would fall upon them, God, that you would create a unity that cannot be destroyed. Yes. In Jesus' name, that there would be such a unity that um, people will wonder what keeps them together. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. there's such honor. Yeah never seen that before what is that the oh, lord we um i have written down i'm like okay governmental so right now i just first i go to our president vice president and speak for those those encounters we claim that for them and i thank you god that you can use anyone and that you have positioned people in our government system, especially in the United States. And guys, if you're not in the United States, you just, you start claiming this for your country, for your leaders, but um, that they will encounter God, that they, uh, the, the, uh, the Daniels, yes. the Josephs that have been in position yes. that Lord, we place, we uh, speak favor over their lives, Lord, to speak into these leaders and that these leaders would have um, ears to hear, God, Amen. ears to hear. And when there's dreams given, Lord, I thank you that you have positioned the people to give the dream interpretations. Yeah. Already you have a plan, Lord. You already have a plan. It's not like you're just gonna give something without um, orchestrating your great, plan lord so i thank you for how you've done that you've already orchestrated in each of our government systems lord um how to walk in a, a furthering of getting to know you and and how to bring that into our government system lord so we just bless our president we bless our vice president we bless their family in jesus name and um i don't know i was i wrote down church leaders i feel like yep. Go for it. For those of you who have gone through 2020, which is all of us, it has been such a test, yes. not just for us individually, but especially for our church leaders. Mm -hmm. How do you respond? And it's almost like you can say nothing without offending someone. Yep. Anything you say could offend someone, whether you're pro something, against something, da 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 da. You didn't say enough. You didn't say you said something at all so lord i just like i can i even see like a like fiery darts coming at church leaders mm -hmm. pastors lord and i just ask for a shield of protection around them Good. Yeah. those that have grown weary especially this past year of dealing with um hit after hit after hit yeah. after hit of just the myriad of um things that we as a society is, have had to figure out and find our, our footing on, Lord, I just ask that, um, like I see like two feet sinking into the sand. Yeah. When you stand as the waves come crashing in, your feet sink deeper and deeper and deeper. And Lord, I thank you for these leaders that have stood. They have stood there as each crashing wave has come and they have stood there, Lord, getting their vision, getting their perspective from you as they gaze into the sun, Lord, that they have been getting, they've been gazing into your eyes. And Lord, I just ask that you, there would be a perseverance, Lord, that there would be problem solutions for them, Lord, that there would be um, grace and rest. We bless our church leaders with rest, God, and with safe places for them to rejuvenate, as I cannot imagine what it has been like to be a pastor in this past year. Just put favor over them in Jesus' name. I don't know if you have anything you want to add to that. Yeah, we do. We continue uh, to posture ourselves as an Aaron and a Her to lift up their hands like Moses on the hill 
so that then the next generation can run and run well. Mm -hmm. And so we strengthen them right now. And we strengthen apostles and prophets, mm -hmm. evangelists, pastors, and teachers, the yeah. fivefold. Yeah. And we just say, the Lord bless you. Mm -hmm. And the Lord keep you. And the Lord make his face to shine upon you. Yeah. And the Lord be gracious to you. Mm -hmm. And the Lord just lift up his countenance upon you. And the Lord bless you and your family and your family's family. And we just bless all of the fivefold ministry. And we say, we need you. Yes. We need you to be strong. Yeah. We need you to be refreshed. We need you to be renewed. Yeah. Like Isaiah 30, those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. Yeah. They will run and not be weary. Yeah. They will walk and not faint. Those who wait, those who wait, yeah. those who wait upon the Lord. And so as someone who's not a pastor, but who has pastored, but someone who does pastor. Sure. I pastor leaders mm -hmm. and I pastor intercessors mm -hmm. and I pastor some of you <laughs> by tools like this. Mm -hmm. I just say to you, we need all of the body of Christ. We have gone through such a season of mm -hmm. testing, mm -hmm. you know, we all need prayer. Yeah. And so I do lift an urgent call for prayer in this hour, an urgent call for prayer on this national day of prayer. And I say to you, I need your prayers. Mm -hmm. We need your prayers. Mm -hmm. The pastors need your prayer. Yeah. And I'm going to say that I, all my life, have lifted the arms of someone else mm -hmm. in authority before the Lord. I have always lifted up the arms of my pastors before the Lord. Whether it was in my little Methodist church that I grew up in, Calgill, Missouri, or whether it was in the Jesus People Movement, or whether it was in the Charismatic Movement, or whether it was in then the third wave movement, and I was in Kansas City, I would lift up the hands of Mike Bickle. I would lift up the hands of Pastor Alan Cook and Carol. I would lift up the hands in moving to Nashville of Papa Don Fento and of Pastor Mansfield at Belmont. And then later, at Grace Center with the leadership there of the different ones that eventually became then Pastor Jeff Dollar. And now today at The Belonging mm -hmm. with Henry and Alex Seeley. I have always lifted up the hands of others. And I want, I'm not boasting in that. It is an example. I want you to lift up the hands of others. If you want prayer for your life, sow the seed uh -huh. of praying for others. Yeah. Because whatever you, whatever field you sow in, you will reap. And so I exhort us today, sow urgent strategic prayer yeah. for those in authority and you will reap a harvest yourself. I just want to ask the question, what is your sphere? Yeah. So um, th this is new. So we're think with Mother's Day coming up. Yeah. Okay. So if you have kids, who are the leaders in your kids' lives? Good job. Is it their teachers? Yes. Is it their Sunday school teachers? Uh -huh. Is it their gym teacher? 
their soccer coach. Those are people that actually do speak into our children. Right. And um, so even in that like question, what is your sphere? Mm -hmm. Who are people that are in leadership positions, even that close That's that right. you can be lifting their hands in prayer? And in my situation, when I would be on the road, which in the past was a lot, and people with parents, or I want to also honor right now single moms. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of there's a lot of you out there. And I just bless you because you could hear Rachel talking about her dear, wonderful, amazing husband which she has, but some of you don't have that. Or some of you don't have a, a dad who prays like me. And so I just want to bless this. I, that's a tangent and it's not because it's God's heart. I bless these single moms out there right now as we go to Mother's Day, because you know, one of the hardest days of the year, sometimes one of the hardest days of the year is Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. It is. When your mom's gone, or what's the hardest is when you're a single mom and there's no one to celebrate you. Yeah. I celebrate you today in the name of Jesus. God, God the Father celebrates you today. Mm -hmm. And we strengthen you today. We, God surrounds you with love and he sings a song over you today. Mm -hmm. And I just, I see Psalm 68 right now mm -hmm. so we'd have to go look at it but psalm 68 i think that there's a verse in there that says that he sets the solitary even in a family mm -hmm. and so i just say over you that god has the place in his heart especially for the single moms and i bless you on mother's day that it will not be a day from Hades, that it will be a day from heaven, and that you have a special place in God's heart yeah. this Mother's Day. And the story I was going to say when that hit me was this. When I would be on the road and parents or a single mom would bring me their children for me to pray over them, there would be this conviction place that would hit me because I would be away from my home. So you know what I would do? Before I would pray for these little children, I would toss up a prayer to God in the sphere of my the sphere of authority. And I would say, God, in my absence, would you send someone into my children's lives to make up for the lack of my absence and send someone into their life right now when I am gone to be a special influencer in their life mm -hmm. while I'm gone. And now before I pray for these, I bless mine in the name of Jesus. And I would do it real quick I had to learn to like go, you know, like do it real fast. Lord, send that special influence to my kid and I bless them right now. And then I go, shut up on a cuss out of my over the, but do you see what I did? I would, before I would pray for someone else's, I would quickly, I always did this. I would say at least 98% of the time, I filled in that gap. Now, not of condemnation, out of conviction, but I also saw that God wanted to fill in that gap. So guess what? God has other people in his arsenal that he would like to use to send in to fill in gaps in our lives. I know it's true. So that came from out of Rachel saying, well, your sphere. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to pray, then who's the gym teacher? Who's the coach? Yeah. Who's the librarian? Who's the influencers? And that is really important. 
I love that. Really is. Well, we're kind of running out of time, yeah. Dad. Um, yeah. Did you want to do your prayer? Yeah. yeah. Before well, we I have written out uh, last week, uh, the fourth week of each month, I send out an article called Targeted Prayer. If you're not on our mail list, I would really encourage you to sign up at James Gall or GodEncounters.com for our on our mail list. And you would get then these targeted prayer articles the fourth Thursday of each month. A new thing that I'm doing with the targeted prayer article, audio and video messages, I am now writing out a scripture-based prayer. And last week, I did it for those in authority. So I'm now going to pray read what I sent out last week. Scripture-based prayer for those in authority. We pray that all those in authority would realize and recognize their personal inadequacy to fulfill their role, and that you would release to them a revelation of dependency upon God. We pray that you would reverse the trends of socialism and humanism in this nation, and all trends that deify man rather than God. Lord, as this nation and different nations go into critical times, we pray for your priorities to be released. Revelation to come of honor of being a public servant. We pray that there would be a reliance upon the word of God, the will of God, and the ways of God as the source of daily strength and wisdom and courage. We pray that there would be a restoration of dignity and honor, trustworthiness, and righteousness in the land. We also pray for our spiritual leaders. We pray for our pastors, our apostles, our prophets, our evangelists, and our teachers. We pray blessings and protection over them. We pray for purity. We pray for our quality of life in their families. We bless those in authority this day, and we declare that this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who desires for all men and women to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. We thank you for them in Jesus' great name. Amen and amen. Amen. So good. Well, Dad, thank you so much for um, pioneering this, for making it a priority, and also for honoring uh, us mamas for Mother's Day. If you guys are curious about the Heroines of Faith book, you can just go to jamesgall.com. There will be a banner at the top that you can see that you can click on. I also have a, the direct link in the description of this video for you. And then also, as far as like prayer goes, that book Prayer Storm really is a great resource. We get questions all the time about, you know, how do I pray for my son? Da, 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 da. How do I pray for my uncle XYZ? So I would encourage you, like there is that uh, chapter about praying your family into God's family. And um, also many other that you kind of touched on earlier, dad, but it's a great resource. So that's also available at jamesgall.com. And I'll have the direct link in the description for you guys. But um, we just want to thank you guys so much for joining us today for carving out time in your busy schedule and making this a priority. Because I think prayer is a priority to God, isn't it? And it's an honor to get to do it with you guys to spend 45 minutes and push pause and see what's on God's heart. So thank you guys for joining us. And um, if this has been a blessing to you, we do have uh, links to sow a financial seed into the ministry. And there's um, several different ways you can do that. There is a link in the description to give directly through our website. If you're watching on Facebook, you can click donate and give that way or text to give if you live in the US. And then there's also 
a number you can call and give that way. But you guys are awesome. Thank you for joining us. To all of you who join us every week, come on. We love having you. For those who are new, yes, so stoked to have you guys with us. We will be back next week, next Thursday, 2 p.m. Central, Facebook, 3 p.m. Central on YouTube. Amen. Hey, God bless you. And obviously, it's all always available in replay mm -hmm. at any time, anywhere in the world. Blessings to you and may you grow in insight for the days in which we live.